Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Okay, I'm gonna, we're going to get started. Um, good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Katsushi Ikiuchi. He's a professor at the University of Tokyo. Uh, Katsu is very well accomplished. He has to work in many areas in computer vision, robotics, and graphics. Um, I'm saying that not just because I am a former student of Katsu. Um, and he, is, he has been an IEEE fellow for 10 years now. And today he's going to be talking about on a, about a subject of monumental proportions. Katsu. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm talking about uh, a project called E-Monument uh, e Project. And what is E-Monument? Basically, uh, there are many uh, historic sites. So we digitize this kind of historic site. And then uh, later, we can use for scientific investigation or uh, amusement or whatever. And for this, you know, uh, we have to worry about a uh, couple of things. Why we have to uh, do this kind of project? One is a uh, monument uh, priceless, priceless and irreplaceable, so should be passed down to the future generations. And also uh, provide computer vision and computer graphics ample frontiers. And in this uh, uh, e-monument project, there are a couple of uh, technical issues. One is uh, sensing, one is uh, uh, content making, and one is communication, and one is display. And today, I'm mainly talking about these sensing issues. And later, uh, maybe the other day, uh, if there is another chance, I'll talk about display and uh, uh, communications. And in this uh, uh, e-monument uh, uh, project, there are uh, two ways to uh, do so. And one is a uh, 2D scenario, such as just uh, using uh, pictures and generate uh, kind of e-monument. Another way is to uh, actually capture 3D uh, dimensional uh, measurement and then using such uh, uh, 3D data uh, uh, for this kind of displays. And uh, I prefer this uh, uh, 3D scenario. So uh, today I'm talking about 3D scenario and especially uh, sensing issues. And uh, uh, so in this 3D scenario, a uh, monument, 3D model, and images. So uh, first we sense the uh, various uh, historic site. In this case, this is uh, Kamakura Big Buddha. And then uh, from this, uh, uh, we obtain uh, various uh, 3D data. And by uh, combining this uh, piece of information to generate uh, this kind of contents. And in this paradigm, first we have to worry about uh, uh, shape information and later uh, photometric information. First, geometric information. In this uh, geometric information, first we obtain uh, 3D data. And this 3D data is a piece of information and obtain various viewing, viewing directions. So we have to determine relative relations and then uh, to connect all together. Yeah, later, later. So don't wait. <laughs> and uh, uh, this is the area which we are working. The Bayan Temple, located at the center of Angkor Thom, unites the outlook on the universe of ancient India and the tradition of Kumer. The temple was constructed around the end of the 12th century to bring relief to the crisis in the Angkor era. It is well known for the appearance of, for example, calm smiling faces on towers and double corridors carved in beautiful, interesting relief. Actually, this is a, a, a temple which we are working. Then why I am working in this particular uh, Bayon temple? First of all, this is a huge structure. So, quite a challenging object. And also, quite complicated and beautiful. Thirdly, central tower is uh, inclin uh, uh, you know, uh, inclining uh, one degree per each year or something. So there is possible collapse in near future. So before collapsing, it is a good idea to obtain 3D data of this uh, temple. 
Now, uh, this size demands lots of the uh, problem in all step of this uh, 3D uh, processing. And first of all, data acquisition. And data acquisition, as Shin Bin asked, you know, uh, we are obtaining two data. One is color images. And probably you know the color image. Basically, at each pixel, you saw a black, a black, uh, brightness information, red, green, blues. What is a range image? Well, at each pixel, we store a distance of corresponding uh, pixels. Now, how to obtain range data? We usually use a range sensor, time of flight, a project laser light, and uh, returns a uh, uh, time of flight. And then from that, we can determine distance. This is called uh, time of flight. And then one of the commercial, uh, avail commercially available sensor is this kind of Silax. And wonderful, uh, yes, uh, this is a uh, uh, range data we obtain. And from frontal view, it looks a uh, black and white image. But since we know the distance, we can rotate. Yes, there are many uh, available sensors from Silax to Vivid, from up to 100 meter, 5, meter, 5, 5 millimeter resolution Vivid, uh, around uh, 20 to 30, cent 30 centimeters and 0.1 millimeter resolutions. Uh, Silax are just uh, 400K. 400? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 uh, four, 400,000. But you know, problem is all are ground based. What? 400,000, not 400, half a million, half a million, one third of a million US dollars. 3,000, 3,000, 300,000, 300, right? Yeah, yeah, About yeah, yeah. yeah. That's US dollars. Great, thank you. That's a significant sum. Yeah, but you know, that's a, a commercially available sensor. Who cares, you know? <laughs> yeah, problem is uh, ground base. What's wrong with ground base? Basically, uh, ground base sensors are from ground, you see all the point. But of course, some portion is uh, uh, missing because due to the occlusion. And what usually we, we can do is uh, build a scaffold around the object and bring up the sensor on, on top of the uh, scaffold. But we are talking about a Bayon temple that is 150 meters, 150 meters, and 45 meters. So we cannot build a scaffold. Yeah, of course, we, we can, but you know, it's not good you know, <laughs> for visitors. So what we're proposing is uh, uh, why, not, why don't you uh, hang a uh, uh, range sensor under the balloon? then you can guarantee any viewing point. And this is a thing which we do. So we build a balloon and hang the range sensor. Of course. Yes. yes. <laughs> Actually, this is all made, you know, we, we build for us. And that's uh, uh, only uh, 200,000 US dollars, not 300,000. <laughs> but anyway. Of course, by using this method, you can guarantee any viewing point, but problem is sensor moves during data acquisitions. So resulting range data is like this. And this is not good, right? So what we did? Well, we mount TV camera on top of laser range sensors. Then uh, you can obtain both image sequence as well as range data. Then what we can do? Of course, I'm from originally from CMU. So we have to use famous Professor Kanada's technique, so-called factorization. And by using uh, image motions, and uh, this is a uh, uh, feature tracking result. And uh, this uh, uh, observation matrix consists of motion matrix and shape matrix. And since uh, uh, multiplication consists of uh, uh, rank three, so by using this rank three constraint, we can divide, we can decompose motion matrix into no, no, observation matrix into motion matrix and shape matrix. But unfortunately, this uh, motion matrix obtained is not so accurate as to be able to rectify range data. What we can do? Actually, uh, we have three data, distorted data, image motion, and balloon motion. So from this, we can extract three constraints. Later, I will explain what is three constraint. And by using this three constraint, we can set up cost function for estimate of motion cameras and uh, uh, iterative, iteratively 
obtain the accurate estimation of sensor motions. What is three constraint? First of all, of course, you know, factorization determine uh, shape information, meaning three dimensional data of each pixel with respect to one particular coordinate system. Also, uh, factorization method estimate what kind of motion this balloon needs, RF, TF and RF. Also, since this sensor contains range sensors, so range sensor also measures the same point with respect to this sensor coordinate system. So, coordinate of this point with respect to motion, uh, with respect to factorization, and uh, uh, with respect to this uh, sensor should be correspond. So, we can set up uh, this kind of equation. Basically, uh, 3D data obtained with this uh, range sensor should be correspond factorization result uh, adjusted by sensor motions. This is the first constraint. Yeah. So at what rate does this, the range sensor scan, and what, what's the pattern of the scanning? Actually, uh, this sensor uh, scan an entire scene around two to three seconds. Three sixty. Yeah. No, no. Three. Uh, you know. Three seconds. Three seconds, and uh, uh, around uh, say four hundred, six hundred pixels. Three seconds. In four yeah, yeah, yeah. The angular extent. Angular. I'm not sure. <laughs> so you think that every single pixel, every single pixel that has depth, yeah. will have a different RT. Yes. Yes. But, you know, uh, unfortunately, uh, factorization method doesn't have a 3D data of every single feature. La only factorization has a 3D data of feature point, you know, coming from a T uh, LTK, no, TLK, TLK tracker. KLT. No, T, TK, T, KLT, 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 KLT tracker. So, yeah, only we are measuring uh, KLT features. Second uh, constraint, well, bundle adjustment. Once you know the uh, motion, estimated motion, reproject the factorization result, then that point should correspond to image point. That is standard way. And uh, this is bundle adjustment. Third constraint, I have been working for a long time for shape problem shading, and origin is coming from smoothness constraint. So I have to use smoothness constraint. And the reason why I use balloon instead of helicopter is Helicopter has high vibration, while balloon has smooth motion. Due to that, we can assume balloon motion is smooth. So we say this kind of uh, smoothness constraint should be satisfied. By plugging this uh, uh, range data constraint, smoothness constraint, no, bundle adjustment, uh, range data constraint on smoothness constraint, we can set up a, a minimization uh, formula. But for this minimization formula, of course, we need good initial conditions. And for that, we are using factorization result. So initial estimation is given factorization uh, result. And then uh, we modify that factorization result by using this cost functions and refine motion parameters. And once you estimate motion parameters uh, from that, we can obtain shape recovery. Actually, this is a CV, CV, ICCV papers, long time ago. And uh, uh, this is a result. Also, this is a distorted range data, image sequence, Re rectify the result. Actually, it turned out our sensor, more vibration, better. And this is totally distorted result, motion sequence, rectified. Besides this, we also develop several other sensor too, and all together, this kind of uh, scene. In order to scan large architectural structures, such as the Bayon Temple, we have to use different types of sensors depending on the location of objects in the site. To scan the deity faces of Bayon, we used a long-range laser sensor named Cyrax. We measured each face from many positions, such as the ground, a scaffold on the roof, and a bucket lifted up by a crane. The data from different directions were integrated, 
and a 3D digital model of each face was built. To scan the narrow space between the terrace and the corridor, a laser sensor named Climbing Sensor, which moves vertically along a ladder, had been developed and was used. Bayon Temple is a huge architectural structure with a large number of high towers, and it is not practical to scan the upper side, especially the roofs from scaffolds. For this task, we used a balloon sensor, a laser sensor suspended under a balloon, which had been developed for this purpose. Two different types of laser sensors were alternatively equipped, depending on the distance to the target. The balloon was manually controlled by four ropes pulled from the ground. So this is a story how to obtain range data, but this is not the end of the story. Uh, we have to obtain uh, 2,000, uh, 10,000 range data from various viewing directions. So we have to determine relative relation. And since we are talking about, say, 10 to 20 range data, of course they are commercially available alignment, uh, alignment software to determine relative relations. But we are talking about 10,000 and quarter terabyte overflow PCs. What is the alignment? Well, basically, this is one range data. This is another range data. We have to determine relative relation, set up the correspondence, and then gradually uh, reduce the gap. And once uh, both data correspond, we can determine rotation translation. That is process called alignment. Then, what is the issue in alignment? We are talking about uh, uh, quarter tera. So requires large amount of memory. Actually, that overflows the uh, virtual memory. And also long computational time. So we have to do something. So uh, we develop a two-step uh, alignment algorithm. One, quick pairwise alignment using graphics processing board. And this is re relatively uh, approximate solution, but quick. And this is initial alignment for next step. And once uh, On-site alignment was done, uh, we bring back all the data to the university and run parallel simultaneous alignment algorithm on PC clusters. First of all, what, why we need this uh, quick uh, pairwise alignment? If computational time required, long, long computational time, students become dry up and dead. And that's not good, right? <laughs> so we need a quick alignment. And what we did? Well, the ti most time-consuming portion is correspondence between data point. If data point is, say, a n uh, 6 power, then uh, computational L and 12 powers. And uh, in order to uh, reduce this uh, computation, uh, we did a little bit dirty uh, correspondence, basically uh, by using a graphics processing unit. And the first uh, mesh is, uh, uh, let's see, first mesh is, First mesh is projected the uh, graphics processing unit, and each triangular patch has own colors, and such color distribution is generated over the uh, graphics processing unit. And we are assuming viewing directions, and then project second image, and then uh, find the corresponding color. And from that, we can set up uh, what kind of uh, correspondence is going on between uh, first view and second view. And this is wrong, actually. This is wrong, but it works. And then uh, computational time become order of n. And uh, as you see, uh, this is a number of vertices, and this is a time. So as you see, it's linear relation. And of course, this is wrong, but uh, uh, that provides uh, good initial estimations. And that's enough for on-site uh, uh, sensor uh, planning, as well as initial solution for next uh, parallel uh, processing uh, uh, softwares. Now let's talk about uh, uh, parallel processing softwares. Why we need the parallel uh, processing softwares? First of all, uh, usually uh, this alignment is done sequentially. Uh, first alignment, second alignment, third alignment, fourth alignment, the other way around, huge gap occurs. So we plug in all the data all together in the memory and determine a relative relation simultaneously. This is called uh, uh, simultaneous alignment. 
However, uh, this is not a large number of bad practices. So first we uh, did uh, linearization and efficient computational method. Basically, uh, cosine is 1 and sine is uh, theta like this, and uh, uh, set up the uh, matrix. And secondly, uh, since uh, this is a sparse uh, matrix, so uh, I use, uh, uh, we use uh, uh, ICC, and then uh, we can reduce the computational time. Second issue, large memories. Since uh, from the uh, original uh, initial uh, alignment, we know which uh, data is corresponding which. So uh, we make uh, a kind of a uh, group of data, and uh, uh, each group is assigned to each PC in PC clusters. And uh, uh, this uh, ending result is sent to uh, server, uh, server computers, and uh, uh, so server determine uh, matrix comp uh, computation while uh, client uh, calculate the correspondence. A single measurement is not sufficient for modeling a huge structure like the Bayon Temple. Therefore, multiple measurements from different viewpoints are required. In order to construct the entire Bayon 3D model, it is necessary to align multiple measurements. Given an initial guess of the positional relationship between two mesh models, a developing algorithm can align them as if we were putting a jigsaw puzzle together in 3D. The result is correct estimation of the positional relationship. Iteration of this alignment process constructs the 3D model. However, this alignment method aligns only two mesh models at each step. Therefore, alignment errors accumulate in one location. So we Im implemented the simultaneous alignment algorithm. <laughs> and then uh, this is an uh, aligned result. And this is around uh, uh, maybe 1,000 gigabyte or uh, one, uh, 0 0.1 giga, uh, no, 1,000 gigabyte or something. And then uh, this is still uh, point present, uh, representation. So we have to connect uh, uh, data, but uh, again, the same story. So I'll skip this portion, and basically what we did, we, we have to do is uh, connect first image and second image, and uh, for this, again, uh, long computational requires, so we parallel this uh, process in parallel computers. And uh, uh, ending result is this one, and uh, uh, this is uh, uh, generated uh, data in the 145, 145, 45 uh, structure is represented two millimeter resolutions. And uh, uh, this is only outside, but also we obtain inside the data too. So uh, you can uh, measure the uh, structure of the uh, bion or uh, do the simulation. And also you can go inside of this uh, data too. Yeah, well, we carefully determine which portion connect inside and outside. So wall two, actually. we measure wall two. Now, the main reason why I went uh, by on was originally when I returned to Japan, in CMU mainly I'm modeling this kind of inside small object. And uh, I'm interested in that. So, however, once it returned to Tokyo, I'm interested in more larger object outside object, and it's worthwhile to model. So one of the such targets was uh, Kamakura Big Buddha that is located outside and uh, a historic monument. And then uh, I uh, uh, scan uh, Nara Big Buddha, and I exhausted Big Buddha in Japan. So I went to Thailand, and uh, I scanned Thailand. Then at that time, Thai people say, 
Next country, uh, uh, neighboring country, Cambodia has a temple called Bayon Temple, and it has a 173 big Buddha. So I said, oh, that's interesting. So I went to uh, ba uh, Bayon Temple. And then it turned out, well, of course, to uh, measure uh, each face is interesting, but also entire structure. So I jump in this uh, entire st uh, structure uh, scanning business. But of course, I also measure the deity faces. And we measure uh, 173 uh, deity faces. This is one of the examples. And uh, these are the uh, library on 173 faces. And Luma says, this 173 faces can be classified into three groups, Deva, Devata, Ashura. So I check uh, whether we can group these 173 into three groups. Well, still library is going on. So user, I took user uh, face classifiers, and it turned out, yes, it is possible. And we can make three groups, Deva, Devata, Ashura. By the way, what is Deva, Devata, Ashura? Well, this is Deva, typical Deva. This is a uh, uh, Devata. And the good point of 3D measurement is, you know, uh, by using such 3D data, we can, we can do this kind of scientific investigation too, actually. And this is Ashura. And also, there was a rumor that a uh, couple of independent uh, worker group exist, and they did the parallel uh, construction of Bayon Temple. So, what we did was uh, uh, we did the clustering of similarity of these entire faces, and it turned out there is a similarity group. And such similarity group, this is one similarity group, this is second similarity group, this is third similarity group, this is fourth similarity group. Namely, similar face exists at proximity position. That uh, supports the conjecture that few independent, independent team of worker exist, and each worker, worker group uh, work this area, this area, this area, this area. And basically, another rumor says, uh, first, master cave this face, and then uh, follower or student cave this kind of surrounding face. And maybe we have to check more uh, this kind of uh, conjectures. And currently, one of my grad students is working on that uh, uh, issues. And also, interesting point is, it turned out by comparing this entire bion structure, somehow this structure is counterclockwise 0 0.94 degrees. And why 0 0.94 degrees? And why they are slightly counterclockwise? But no one knows. But anyway, this kind of uh, uh, invest, uh, finding is obtained from this uh, measurement. Also, pediment. I didn't realize this pediment is important, but the, the day before yesterday, I gave a, a, a Berkeley, and one of the uh, Buddhist department of Buddhism professor is quite excited. By the way, what is pediment? Well, this uh, uh, Bayon temple revealed a couple of times due to that. Uh, previous uh, uh, beautiful, I don't know, what is pediment in English? Well, you know, win window, 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 window caving or something. <laughs> so to, what is Christmas tree? Christmas tree is a to, to decorate tree, right? Oh, yeah, 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 so decorate, decoration of windows, that is called pediment. I, I don't know. <laughs> And, uh, but, uh, however, uh, this pediment is well hidden. And even though uh, currently you visit uh, uh, Bayon Temple, you cannot see. And like this, you know, uh, this is around 40 centimeters and quite dark. And so what we did was uh, put the lens sensor here and the mirror. And through this mirror, uh, we measured various portions of the ped pediment and uh, connect together. 
And this world premiere, uh, this world premiere is too much, you know. I'm saying this is uh, a uh, 25th world premiere. And then I show this one, and I'm not realized this is quite important, but according to a Berkeley professor, this is quite important. Why? Because originally there was a Buddha, and that Buddha was caved out and lighted down some uh, Shiva uh, structure. So that is important, but I didn't realize it. Other uh, drawing like this, and even though uh, you can see this picture, but previously before us, there is no picture existing because even though you go to uh, uh, Bayon, you cannot take pictures at all. So no picture at all. So this is in, in really world premiere, where 25th of world premiere. And according to Berkeley professor, this is quite important figure, but I'm not sure why this is important, but according to him, <laughs> Yeah, around this area it's important. But for me, you know, just, you know, uh, junk. <laughs> I like this one. You know, so, seems to me quite uh, nice. But according to him, this is not interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, second issue, uh, texturing. And uh, uh, there are lots of the issues. First of all, how to determine a uh, relative relation between camera and uh, uh, color sensor. But I'll skip this uh, component today. And the uh, uh, second uh, issue on texturing is illumination variations. And of course, you know, uh, there are many uh, techniques in graphic society to smooth out this kind of gap. Because, you know, this Bion Temple is a quite large structure. And even though you take picture around here, moving around, you come back around, uh, you know, you become an afternoon. So color is different. And of course, there are many uh, techniques to average and uh, uh, remove the gap. But for archaeological point of view, we shouldn't put arbitrary color on this kind of art, uh, you know, uh, historic site. Well, this biome probably it's OK. But you know, if we are talking about uh, uh, historic monument, original color is important. So key question is, how to obtain real colors? How to obtain, how to remove effect of sunlight? And uh, uh, we attack this problem. And uh, as you know, uh, observation spectrum is multiplication of surface spectrum and illumination spectrum of each uh, RGB. And in order to simplify the story, uh, we uh, assume a uh, narrow band uh, and, by the way, color constancy. So, you know, basically, observation color is multiplic multiplication of surface color and illumination color. Basically, graphic, graphic case, you can generate this one. And the vision case, we have to solve this inverse problem. And I shouldn't say too much, but, you know, uh, vision may be difficult than graphics. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, we have to solve this inverse problem. Now, uh, in order to simplify the story, uh, I use a narrow band, uh, narrow band assumption. Basically, uh, each uh, uh, RGB is coming from just uh, you know, uh, clinical uh, delta of particular wavelengths. Then, R component of image is uh, uh, surface color, R, and uh, illumination color. Still, this kind of uh, uh, relation fold. And also, one more ambiguity is uh, intensities. And uh, even though uh, observation is the same, uh, sometimes uh, more uh, brighter surface and dark illumination or uh, darker surface and uh, brighter illumination provide the same solution. So we cannot obtain real intensity value or real value, rather uh, 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 relative values. So in order to compensate such ambiguities, usually we can use so-called chromaticity divided by uh, I, G is divided by B or uh, divided by R divided by B, B or something like this. And uh, there are two chromaticity, but for linearity, we prefer this one. Now, uh, still this uh, chromaticity space, uh, previous uh, observation, equi e pro previous uh, observation, equi uh, hmm? observation equation hold. By the way, basically, we obtain R and G, and SR, ER, SG, EG is unknown. And at each pixel, uh, 
four unknown while only two equations. So it poses a problem. And even though you increase the light source, uh, you increase the unknown more, and you cannot solve. So we have to introduce some assumptions. We can introduce uh, uh, black body radiation assumptions, namely, all illumination is coming from this black body radiators. Basically, uh, if heat this black body, depending on the temperature, uh, different color appears. And this color is called black body radiation colors. And uh, for example, uh, snow is blue, and uh, uh, this is high temperature, and gas burner surrounding area due to the lots of the oxygen, uh, you can see this kind of high temperature. While central area is uh, uh, less oxygen, so lower temperature. And also sun, uh, noon sun is uh, around here, and early sun is uh, around here, like this. So uh, natural uh, illumination can be approximated this uh, black body assumptions. It turned out inverse of this uh, black body uh, assumption, uh, black body color is approximated a straight line. And uh, by the way, uh, EG, one is divided by EG and one divided by ER is like this straight line. And we measure in Tokyo. I think it's the same in Seattle, but uh, since we are measuring in Tokyo, so this is the Tokyo data. And uh, uh, this uh, M and C is a uh, known parameter. Now, by using this assumption, what we can do is observation equation. IG and R, R, uh, IR is no uh, observation, and this is unknown. By the way, we can uh, modify this equation like this. Then this is observation, this is unknown. This is observation, this is unknown. Uh, from the uh, black body assumption, uh, EG is this kind of equation. M and C is known parameters. By plugging this component to this one, this component to this one, we can set up this kind of equation. SG, M. And here, SG surface color is unknown value, while IG, IR is observation value. This is known parameters. So at each point, when you observe, you can write it down one straight line. This is a possible surface colors. And fortunately, depending on observations, this Line, uh, you know, straight line inclination is different. So one observation provides one straight line. The other observation another provides another straight, straight line. And from this intersection, provide true color. But unfortunately, this is a little bit stable. So further, uh, and this is an example, uh, given 4 p.m. image and uh, 4 p.m. image, 1 p.m. image from this we can obtain real color. Now, unfortunately, this is still unstable, so we introduce a couple of the constraints, such as solution areas, this areas, and if a uh, solution is outside, we force to move this inside. Then, this is true color, and uh, uh, using this uh, and this is true color, actually. And this is a combination of the various, uh, you know, uh, light, actually, this is a light source, one, light source color, and this is a, a resulting uh, observations. And by, and this is uh, uh, true colors, and this is uh, introducing constraint, while this is original uh, solutions. We are claiming that our method is better than previous method with respect to comparing the two colors. This is input. This is a uh, uh, true color. This is our solution. This is original solution. And by pasting this kind of color to this uh, bion, and bion case we don't need a real color because this is arbitrary color, but you know, by pasting this uh, real color, we can obtain this one. But still, there is ambiguity in intensity. So by adjusting histogram between intensity between brighter area and darker area, we can obtain this kind of result. And by using this kind of data, one of the uh, Japanese printing company generated this kind of virtual tour uh, movies.
little bit of content issue. Why we are working 3D? Because by using this 3D, we can generate various content. For example, in this another Big Buddha case, current Big Buddha was a rebuilt one. Originally built in seven, uh, 8th century, but burned twice due to the domestic civil wars. We would like to original shape. Fortunately, uh, we have lots of literatures and also miniature uh, models. So by combining this uh, literature information, uh, miniature information, and the current 3D model, we can generate the original uh, situations. The Nara Great Buddha in Todaichi Temple is the most important and greatest Buddha in Japan. The 15-meter bronze Buddha image, surrounded by the Great Buddha Hall, was originally constructed in the 8th century. Unfortunately, however, several disasters critically damaged these architectural marvels. The currently existing Buddha and Great Hall were rebuilt during the 17th century. We have been attempting to restore this great cultural heritage object to its original state through the use of digital techniques. First, the current view was captured with three-dimensional laser scanning. Using the digital model and the literature survey enabled us to synthesize the original model. In May 2001, we spent two weeks for digitizing this great Buddha. In order to retain the higher viewpoints, scanning was done not only from the ground, but also from the ceiling. First, 180 range images were converted into a triangular-based mesh model. Then all partial mesh models were aligned together, avoiding error accumulation by using our simultaneous registration algorithm. After aligning all mesh models, our octree-based parallel volumetric view merging algorithm was applied to determine the consensus surface and generate a unified mesh model of the Great Buddha. This information is vital for cultural conservation and will be useful for further simulation of original state restoration. In the history of Japanese Buddhism, temple architectural styles have gradually changed. The current Buddha Hall, built in the 17th century, is distinctly different from the original style. Fortunately, about 100 years ago, architectural historians built a miniature of the original state according to the literature survey and a comparison of the architectures of the same period. We have also scanned this model using laser sensors. Due to the limit of the sensor's accuracy and measurement configuration, however, the finer portions of the miniature cannot be acquired at a satisfactory level. Tosho Daiji Temple is a construction of the 8th century and retains the ancient styles of Buddhist architecture. In June 2001, we went to Tosho Daiji and took the partial 3D model. Totally, 780 range images were taken for 20 parts of the architecture. From the miniature model, the global positions and rough dimensions of the parts can be acquired. We extended our alignment algorithm to be able to determine the optimal scaling parameters. The miniature model was combined with parts models into the final one through this extended algorithm. The last step was the restoration of the Great Buddha. The literature survey enabled us to determine the dimensions of the original Great Buddha. 
The current model was morphed into the original model using these dimensions. Through digital composite morphing technology, using the archaeological knowledge, we can synthesize the original view of the Naragri Buddha in its main hall. And actually, uh, today's talk is a uh, uh, digital biome project and a uh, sensing issue uh, how we design this uh, balloon sensor to obtain various viewing direction and a uh, little bit about the huge data uh, parallel alignment algorithm and photo consistency and illumination color estimations. And uh, so this is Berkeley slide. So next week at Berkeley, I'm talking about uh, the remaining issue 2D scenario and also this place, but anyway, to, not here. Uh, and uh, uh, sponsoring uh, uh, I ban roughly 10 million US dollar for just uh, 10 years. And by the way, uh, due to the, uh, from this uh, project, uh, I produced uh, 10 PhD, and uh, I collected that all PhD thesis in one book. So I'm giving this to Shin Bin oh, Khan, and this is a uh, uh, digitally archiving cultural object. So if you are interested, please read. I'm advertising, and also web website too. Thank you very much. Additional questions for a speaker? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who, who gave you $10 million? <laughs> uh, minister, yeah, minister of Education, actually. Sorry? Minister of Education. I see, I see, I see. Because culture is important. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, this project is not a uh, cultural heritage preservation, rather uh, developing sensing technologies as well as uh, software technologies. So due to that, I'm emphasizing that balloon sensor or radar sensor too. Right? So, Katsu, um, is, is the, are the data uh, going to be available, available to the public? Or? Yeah, that's uh, you know, a touchy issue. The reason is uh, in order to obtain this data, we negotiate a Cambodian government. And uh, uh, I try to uh, push them to make this one uh, publicly available. But still, that is negotiation is going on. And still, some component, uh, some portion is still missing. So even this uh, August, we are returning to Cambodia again. And once completed, yes, I would like to uh, make this uh, soft uh, data available. What about the, the previous work they've done, like the Nara Buddha? And Nara Buddha is more uh, difficult. The reason is that is active uh, religious target, and uh, uh, temple is quite uh, uh, reluctant to make that three data open. Okay. But the uh, Cambodia, yeah, I shouldn't say so. But you know, one of the reasons why I go Cambodia is. Yes, Bayon Temple is temple, but not active uh, religious target. So relatively easy to negotiate, actually. Okay. Yeah. What do you feel about range scanning versus um, very dense photo yeah. scanning and, and stereo? And some of the results I've seen from stereo lately seem like to indicate that you could almost do everything from photos. Um, yes, you know, uh, actually, if... Uh, uh, that 3D object has uh, lots of geometric features, a uh, stereo system works well. But uh, if the uh, object is uh, uh, less geometric feature, such as curved surface and smooth surface, range sensor is better. So recently, I'm thinking to combine range sensor and photometric uh, 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 binocular stereo system. But you know, of course, in you know, a binocular stereo is one way to go, actually. Then actually, binocular stereo system, uh, I didn't talk, but you know, uh, texture mapping is easy. So we are using for texturing, uh, first we obtain rough three-dimensional shape as well as color, and then align that three data on top of that uh, uh, range, uh, range, uh, range data obtained by range sensor. Then we can texture over the range data image, actually. Any other questions? Bion Temple, there's still lots and lots of holes everywhere you look there, you'll keep finding little holes. Well, well gradually, the uh, number of the holes is reducing, but you know, still. How are you, are you going about that in a, some systematic way where you say, okay, here's a hole, you have to go fill it? And yeah, actually, uh, this is a 
purpose of、uh, why we are obtaining 3D data. And for graphics purpose, we can use four filling、uh, technique and uh, de uh, remove the hole. But you know, that is artificial, and、uh, some of the a r c h i t e c t d o e s n t like it. And they want to add these data. So even though there may be a hole, that's fine. You know, rather precise, accurate data is better than. Merger between the scan data and then doing、um, stereo, so you could send somebody in with a model where the holes are, look carefully photographs, that's from many directions rather than having to set up the hole. Actually, the stereo system has less holes, so you know,、uh, we combine stereo and the range data, we can remove the holes actually.、Yeah. So,、uh, when you show close ups of the bio temple walls, there was some sensor noise. Mystery of patch surfaces, you expect.、Uh, it wasn't that smooth.、So、did you pre process the data? There was a video where you were showing close up flight throughs、uh, of the Bion Temple. Well,、uh, which one?、Uh, you know, I sensor noise. Yeah, it's a wall from the sides there. Yeah, yeah, I know.、Uh, somehow uh, our uh, merging program doesn't make a、uh, uh, how to say, sharp edge you know, due to the、uh, limitation of voxel actually. And in、uh, uh, this case, uh, uh, resolution was not two, two centimeter resolution, rather, this video is a、uh, ten centimeter resolution. But you could use shape priors or something to clean it up. Maybe we can do that. But、uh, well, for that, we need.、Uh, yeah, so you know, I'm talking about uh, uh, Microsoft Research Asia guy to build, uh, build uh, an eHeritage project. And、uh, definitely, we need this kind of、uh, help from、uh, Microsoft Research Redmond, such as、uh, various uh, you know, geometric guys. And、uh, if possible, I would like to send my grad student here and work and <laughs> solve this problem. Well, let's thank our speaker once more. Thank you.